The cartoon says, Let me interrupt your expertise with my confidence. Confidence over expertise. Don't be that. I don't want to be that. Your confidence should be at the same level of your expertise. Hi everyone, this is Paul Loves to Read and as you know in this channel, it's all about spreading the love and joy for literature. And today, I'm going to share with you the book that I have attempted to review twice and this is the third time because I keep thinking about it again and again. It's, <laughs> it's called Think Again by Adam Grant. Definitely one of my top books for this year. Definitely five stars. It's a Bill Gates recommended book. It's, it is very much needed nowadays. Yeah. And as you could see, we have plenty of um, markers, <laughs> markings in this book because there's just a lot to, to digest and a lot to come back to again and again. And it's, uh, it's, I feel like it's really a, it's a relevant, highly relevant book for the times we live in. Who should read this? Everybody should read this. But more so, I would recommend this to probably college students and also young, young professionals. Um, only because it's, it feels very foundational. This is something that you could bring with you throughout your professional career and throughout your personal life. Uh, at any point in your life, I think you will still benefit here. But just so if we want to be more specific, I would recommend this to that group of people. So Adam Grant is a famous, <laughs> famous, Adam Grant is a well-known professor and well-known speaker. Um, and you would have probably heard of him do TED Talks a lot. Um, and his first, if I'm not mistaken, his first book was called The Originals, which was a smashing best-selling hit. I have not read it. <laughs> I have not read it, but that's okay. And then he has another book. I forgot what the other title is, title is. And then this one, Think Again. Think Again is published just this year, if I'm not mistaken, 2021. Um, and also uh, you would see Adam Grant um, very active in social media in terms of sharing his thoughts. Um, jokingly, I call him or, you know, he's a professor, but I also think in terms of what he does for a living or what is his profession, he's a thinker is, is what I jokingly refer to his profession because that's what he does. He thinks. He hones his cognitive abilities and he thinks. If, you, if you've seen my review of Deep Work, um, Kyle Newport uh, featured or mentioned Adam Grant in one of his examples of people who does deep work really, really well. Maybe I can start with reading the full title of the book, uh, The Power of Knowing What You Don't Know. Think again. So I feel like the title of the book itself already says a lot. Um, the power of knowing what you don't know and the power or the ability to think again. Uh, it says a lot already. And I love the idea of it because when you say think again, and this is essentially what the book is about, when you say think again, it means you're open. You're open to discussion. You're open to dissent. You're open to dialogue because you're open to thinking again and again and to, to welcome other people's ideas, to welcome other people's thoughts. And having that, you know, having that ability to, to put yourself in other people's shoes. So I thought, you know, I love the whole concept of it. Um, and I feel like it's something that is very much needed, as mentioned, in this day and age. Um, if I can relate to how we consume media and how we search for news, everything now is fast-paced, right? All the news that we receive, all the communication format, uh, it's all fast. Like, everything is at the tips of your finger. You just go to the internet and everything is there. And there is this need to be first the first to announce something, the first to, to um, break the, the story or something. With that notion of wanting to be first and wanting to be fast, sometimes you lose a lot of, con maybe not even sometimes, maybe a lot of times, you lose context. You lose a lot of context, right? Because context requires time. Context requires longer content. But nowadays, when everything wants to be, needs to be faster and first, we give up on the context. We remove it and we just kind of show the headline and, you know, add a little few more words and then that's it. 
think again enters in that discussion because you as the viewer as the recipient of the news it is your responsibility to think again i feel like this is really a responsibility that we do not take everything at face value i think we shouldn't really with the way news and with the way um i don't know content goes around these days i think it is our responsibility to think again and you should not take everything at face value um, and that's what the book will teach you why it's important and how you can do it first part is explaining why is it important why do you need it why do you why why do we need to think again now in this day and age and then the second part is about how can you apply this where can you apply this thinking again is not exclusive to the news that you receive now not just that it's one of them but not just that think again uh, what he teaches you here is more of a, a principle almost uh, more than just a behavior but really like a like a foundational skill that you should have um, so for example right you have always you have always held on to a to an opinion let's say and for the longest time, for you know, for years, you have held on to this specific opinion because you you feel that it's the right one and it's true and so on, and that's fine. But what this book will tell you is that you should push that a little further, and there is and that there is nothing wrong with revisiting previous opinions and beliefs and kind of looking at it from a different angle and see maybe you have room, you know, you have wiggle room. Um, to change your opinion. Why should you change your opinion? Well, I can ask, why not? <laughs> Everything changes, right? The times change, the world we live in now change, technologies change, people change. Your opinion should change too. And there's nothing wrong with it. That's another thing, right? I have to admit, that was the thinking before. If you're the type of person who keeps changing his mind or his opinion, you are unreliable. But I have to also say that the, your opinions can change, right? But your principles should not. That's very different from an opinion, okay? Principles do not change. If you have principles, you know what I'm talking about, okay? <laughs> if you don't, start thinking about it. But anyway, so principles is different from opinions. And opinions should and absolutely change. And that's what the book will tell you how and why it's important. Um, another thing that he said here that I really loved, and I think that's <laughs> that that's the part that solidified my my love for this concept, is the the concept of humility. I'm a fan of humility, of that word, of that principle, of that behavior, because you know I always tell my friends, my loved ones that you know the world doesn't revolve around you. There are other people out there. Your opinion is not. The only opinion you're you're not always right and that's okay and that's what he's saying here that you should always start from a place of humility because when you do you realize that you are more open to discussion and you realize that you are you know you you're more forgiving and you're more sympathetic therefore you get to understand better because from the onset palang from the start just from the start you're already open. You, you have that, you know, you, you don't have prejudice. You don't, you don't have, you're not stubborn. So that's, that's where the real change and the real um, discovery happens, right? And also the real learning that happens. Imagine you went to an art school, right? And imagine that you have always, um, you have always done your paintings a certain way. And then suddenly the professor said, forget everything you know, we're going to do something different today. If you're not humble enough, if you feel like, if you start thinking that, I don't agree, I've, I've been doing my way for the longest time and it's working for me, why should I change it? If you have that mindset, you're not going to learn. You're not going to learn anything new. You're going to be stuck in your own ways. And why would you want to be that? Diba? You want to be always improving. You want to be always, you know, Improving, progressing, learning, right? You have to keep on learning. And you can only learn if you're willing to think again. There. I really believe it is relevant now. Uh, I feel like this is a very timely book. Um, I, I feel like it's 
it, it has a clear call to action, yun pa, right? We, we read a lot of non-fiction, self-improvement books. We do. There are a lot of good ones out there. Um, but not all of them would have a clear call to action after the book. This one has. And, and I, I love that. I, I appreciate that. Um, and also, it's, like I said, the, the, the notion or the concept, the idea that thinking again is rooted into humility that is the foundational core that's the bed that's the foundational bedrock of this of this concept is humility that immediately you know calls to me i get it i understand it the problem is that most people get stuck in that point which we call mount stupid because what it really means is that you think you already know enough that you could express opinions about it but really you don't know that much and you get stuck in the mount stupid so you have to get past the mount stupid by reading more about the topic learning more about the topic and that's when you get past mount stupid and really you know really convince everyone and yourself that you know enough the cartoon says let me interrupt your expertise with my confidence Confidence over expertise. Don't be that. I don't want to be that. I don't want to be that. Who wants to be that? Your confidence should be at the same level of your expertise. In conclusion, obviously, I enjoyed the book. And I hope my third attempt in reviewing this book would satisfy me, finally, so we could release this review. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, in conclusion, I would highly recommend that you read this book. Um, it's a skill that I feel like everybody needs right now. It's a concept, it's a principle that would definitely benefit you uh, and your loved ones as well, the people you have relationships with. And if your work is about producing ideas or producing new strategies or new concept, this one, I think you'll definitely benefit from this one as well. So there you have it. <laughs> so there you have it. I have said a lot. I hope I convinced you. I am passionate about this book, this concept. So I hope you give it a try. And let me know what you think. Thank you. And that's it. That's a wrap. We're done for today. 2.30.